I am Coach Cox, and I want to welcome you to the Phil Petty Celebration of Life. Gosh, I feel like we ought to be playing a run-in song or something right now, seeing all these familiar faces and all. I just want to thank you all for coming out today and all. But the first thing I'd like to do right now is open us in a word of prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for Phil Petty and for the celebration of his life. God, I pray a special prayer for all of his family members, for Morgan and McCoy and Sage and for Loretta and Allison and Lori and Jim and just all the family members, God. God, we know this process is not something that's going to be overnight, but we pray that you will be with them and heal them in a special way. God, sometimes it's so hard to understand what your will is in one and all, but I just pray you'll be with us today, and God, I just pray that that through this program today that we can glorify and honor you and also it will be a time to celebrate all the great memories of Phil Petty. And God, I'm just so thankful that in the words of Shane Beamer that we can welcome home today Phil Petty. Okay, as a coach, my thing that I have to do is when, when I was coaching, coaching me, is a game plan. So, so my game plan for today is that, that we want to glorify God through the celebration of Phil Perry. You know, I could, thought about it the last couple of weeks. I've been thinking about Phil an awful lot. And I was thinking and wondering, you know, what in the world uh, that Phil might be doing in heaven. But you know, the first thing I wanted to, to think about was that we can celebrate Phil today because of the celebration that took place on February the 25th, 1990, that that was the day that Phil had accepted Christ and he was baptized. And from that day on, he was 11 years old. And that's why we have peace in knowing where Phil is today and that he's in heaven right now. And that if we've accepted Christ into our life, then we will have that opportunity of seeing Phil again in heaven and spending eternity with him someday. Uh, Brandon Hughes told me a funny story that back that even when Phil and Brandon were little classmates, little boys, and Loretta used to take them to school, that Loretta was trying to plant the seed of import, the important seed of becoming a Christian. She used to make Brandon and Phil sing Jesus Loves Me every day going to school. Well, finally one day Brandon and Phil said, No, I'm not going to do it. Well, she stopped the car and told them, you're not going in, you're not leaving this car until you sing. So again, I think he had the, the right influence on him early in life on trying to make sure that, that Christ was a priority. Okay, first day in heaven, what did Phil do? Well, first of all, the minute he came to heaven that day, that Jesus was there at the gates of heaven, I feel like, and, and told him, well done, my faithful servant. And probably on that first day, too, I'd be willing to bet that Phil was somewhere in heaven with his father, either tossing a football, shooting hoops, or if there's a, a fishing lake in heaven, I'm sure they found it that day. And they were fishing off somewhere, too. I'm sure that Phil, soon after that, gathered everybody, all his family members and friends that were already in heaven, that he gathered them all around, somewhere in heaven, and told them uh, that he was the first quarterback at South Carolina to ever win back-to-back -back Outback Bowls over Ohio State. Now that's something I don't know if any quarterback anywhere could say, beating Ohio State in a New Year's Day Bowl back-to-back -back years. And he was also named the MVP of the Outback Bowl uh, his second year that he played. I think, too, that he probably told them that he was uh, the first quarterback to knock off number one ranked Alabama in williams Bryce Stadium, uh, that that was a huge accomplishment. He also, his senior year, was voted one of the permanent team captains. And I have the opportunity in my job now, where I'm in South Carolina a lot, covering the Gamecocks, that every time I go to the media, room post-game or go to the field, I see Phil's picture in the hallway on the Hall of Captains where he was a, a permanent team captain. Also, uh, Phil's probably told him that he was 
the a starter and a key member on the 1996 basketball team at Boyd Springs High School uh, that was the only region championship in school history. Uh, he also was a 1996 quarterback, led the Bulldogs football team to the playoffs and what I personally think was the best team, football team ever at Boyd Springs High School. He was a part of that. But one of the most important things he probably was telling everybody in heaven was bragging on that he uh, out kicked his coverage and married his wife Morgan and had two beautiful children, uh, Sage and McCoy, and that his son one day he felt like probably was going to be better than he was. And that was something that I'm sure he shared those stories in heaven over and over again. Phil's basketball memories that I had the opportunity of coaching Phil for three years, that he was uh, a guy when my second year at Bowen Springs that I'd heard a lot about. There was a really talented kid at the, over at the middle school that would be coming up next year. So I had to meet this guy. And sure enough, that, that I met him and all, and Phil actually came over and was the first freshman to, to start on the basketball team at Bowen Springs High School. Uh, he, at one time, when he had a great game, and one, and this was in the record books for a while, but he hit five threes against Gaffney. I uh, remember that. That was a huge win for us in our championship season when we had a really big game with them. Uh, he also hit the game-winning shot in a ma key matchup during the season against Greer. That Greer and our team were both ranked in the top five in the state at the time. Greer beat us one point over there. They came to our place and he hit the winning basket with three seconds on that. And then his biggest game, and I believe this is still in the record books at Boyle Springs High School, we went to Chester knowing that if we won that night, that we would have at least a share of the Region 2-4A championship. And Phil uh, did not disappoint us that night. He had a career high, school record high, 38 points. And we won that game and went on to be the region champions that year. I've got two funny stories I want to share today when I was thinking about Phil and some funny things. And the first one was the story back when Phil was in the 10th grade. And we were getting ready to play Norman High School. And that was a big game for me because that's where I used to coach. And I left to come to Bowen Springs from. So I love nothing more than going back and beating those boys at Dorman. And Mr. Moore knows this story too, because he was one of the few that was in on this with me. Uh, that I was trying to think of a way to really motivate the team and get them as fired up as I was about going over to the back my hand gymnasium to play. So what I did was I called the, the flower shop and I had them to deliver a rest in peace wreath to the school. And I took the wreath and I wrote a card and it was saying, if you think your boys from Bowling Springs can beat us, uh, well, good luck to that. And, I, and it was signed from your friends at Dorman. Well, again, Mr. Moore was in this too. We had a big pep rally that day. And so we took the wreath out there and we put it on the middle of the floor in the gym. And I got up and read the card. Well, Phil was so mad. I mean, I had to almost sit on him to calm him down. He was so furious. Well, we went over that night and, and not only beat Dorman, but we blew him out for the first win ever back my hand gymnasium at the old Dorman there. And it was so funny after the game, Phil was one of the players saying, you know what you can, what you can do with that wreath and what you, what you can stick that wreath. And I'm like, calm down, Phil. We can't say that. He said, let's bring the wreath back to him. But, I don't know if some of the players, to even to the day, knew that's what we did that night. Matter of fact, I put that back in the equipment room, and, and Alan Knight and I, uh, we pulled that out two other times to motivate teams, and I was 3-0 with the wreath there, though, but that was the best $25 I ever spent. And then in another big region game that we had uh, against one of our region foes, that we were playing an unknown team, I won't mention any names or anything for this, but it was a highly physical game and that they were getting after it pretty good and it was a very, very key game that day too. 
So it was back and forth the whole way. And one of the players on this other team kept holding Phil's jersey. And so Phil was getting really frustrated. So Phil went over to uh, the referees and said, this guy's holding me. Everywhere I go, he's holding me and he won't let me go. Well, we called the timeout uh, in the fourth quarter and the guy came over and said something to Phil as he was coming over the timeout. Phil comes over to me and said, coach, you're not going to believe what he just said to me. I said, what, Phil? He said, he told me about it to shut up. I was going to wake up in the ditch somewhere. So we've got great memories back of the days back then. And I will always love and cherish to me that that team was the best, and I think it will be the best basketball team. Now, one of their assistant coaches with me today, uh, now he's going to disagree with me on that because he's going to see if he can top that. But I think that was the best team I ever coached and the best group of guys that I had the, the opportunity of ever working with, and we've got some great memories. Now, we've got some people on our program, too, that have some great memories. That last week I was down at the Birdies with, with Beamer Golf Tournament and talked to Shane Beamer, and you know, he shared to me what Phil had meant to the South Carolina family and the South Carolina football program. And I knew he could not be here today because they're out practicing right now, but he said he would like to send a message today that we've got his video tape message we're going to show in just a minute. And then also one of Phil's best friends in his backcourt mate. And when I talked to Brandon about a week ago, he said, Coach, I lost my backcourt mate. And Brandon was very emotional. He's out of town today. But it took us six tries that he got so emotional. But Brandon sent a special message about his memories of Phil. And then if you look in our program, we'll go straight after that that we have J.P. Conley, who was Phil's quarterback coach at Warren Springs High School. James Davis, who I think was one of the best running backs at Everett Boyle Springs High School. Jared Johnson, who was one of his uh, football teammates there. And also Kevin Crow, who was a member of our championship basketball team that would like to, to share a couple of memories of it. So we're going to go ahead and start the video now. And then the other guys, if y'all will just come up with when the videos are open, we'll go from there. Thank you. Everyone, uh, Shane Bieber here. Just wanted to uh, one reach out and tell you uh, how sorry I am for the loss of uh, unbelievable husband, and father, and Gamecock, and Phil Petty. Uh, someone that uh, my first interactions with Phil was I was a graduate assistant at Tennessee back in the early 2000s when Phil was the starting quarterback here at Carolina. Just had so much respect for him as a coach on the other side of the way that he played the game. Getting to know him at my first stint here at Carolina, and then since I've come back as well, his support and, and whatnot. Um, certainly been missing dearly, and to know what he meant to so many. Uh, praying for everyone that's, that's grieving right now, and, and I know that you're in our prayers and hearts here at Carolina, and especially thinking of Phil and, uh, and his, Phil's family and, and whatnot. But he did so many great things for this state, for this program. And, always be uh, near and dear to all the eight times. God bless. Hello everyone. Brandon Hughes here. Uh, sorry I couldn't be here today in person to celebrate the great life of childhood friend of mine, Phil. Uh, it's, it's really hard to, to understand and uh, make, make sense of all this at the moment, but you know, looking back, you know, I saw all those great attributes Phil, Phil had as far as leadership, uh, his willingness to put, put his teammates ahead of himself, and just the calm and uh, calm demeanor that he had in pressure situations as we Grew up through playing sports together and obviously basketball from, in my situation through high school. But um, Phil's always willingness to put teammates before him. That leadership, you just could tell early on that Phil was definitely something special. Um, also, I'd like to say condolences to his mother, Loretta, uh, his two sisters, Allison and Lori, and also his wife, Morgan, and their two beautiful, beautiful children. I, uh, thoughts and prayers are certainly out there with you guys through this tough period. Um, I 
Love, love you, Phil. Love the family. Thank you for all the great memories you've we've shared together. And, uh, you'll always be, be my backcourt teammate in my heart, and all the great memories we've shared together will, will stay with me forever. Um, the impact you've had on people, not just there in Warren Springs, but across the state and across the country, will, will hold strong and the legacy will, will live on forever. Thank you. I miss him, 
and hopefully someday I can be back up there teaching them a few more things about throwing the football. Oh, one more thing. When this, ha when this happened, I text all my coaches that I work with and said, please send prayers and thoughts to his family. And one of the coaches came back, he goes, I'm a Clemson guy through and through, but it was Phil that made me root for the Gamecocks. And I thought that sent a lot of, sent a message to me how strong a character and a great person he was. I left Bowling Springs in 2008. I got rid of everything black and red, except one thing. And I think it deserves to be worn for the first time since. We love you, Phil. Good evening. I'm James Davis. Uh, I was on the team captain of field for the 1996 football team. Uh, field was my quarterback. He wore number nine. So I respect if you're able, can you please stand and give a nine second moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. Phil Petty, my quarterback, my teammate, my friend, my brother. You know, when I was asked to speak at the ceremony, I was speechless. I had memories running through my head of Phil making plays from middle school to high school. I never met a person more competitive than me till I met Phil. The last few weeks, all I heard was stories on top of stories on how great a football player and athlete he was. Now I can stand up here and I can tell stories of him making winning shots, great passes, which he did. He did all those things, but I'm not. I promised myself I won't get emotional about this thing, so excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Phil was a friend. He taught me a lot about that. You can tell a friend by the way you, by the way, laugh and talk. Not though friends aren't really like that. There are people that touch your heart. Phil touched a lot of people's heart. There are people that you can um, share seats with, cry with, laugh with, and just have fun with. They don't judge you. They accept you for just who you are. Phil did all those things and more. Phil was that friend that accepted everybody. He accepted us into his home like his family. His mom accepted all of us for open arms. And we love you all for that. More than you ever know. His legacy will always live on. You always be my quarterback, my teammate, my friend, my brother. Feels always gonna be a good off for life. Thank you. My name is uh, Jerry Johnson. Um, I'm a product of fear. And when I say I'm a product of fear, even when we competed against each other in the Middle League, he gave me the hardest time. But our parents used to tell us that our group was special. You guys are going to go to high school and you guys are going to be the first team to bring home a championship in this community. And they say community and, you know, being 42 years old now, I understand what it means, but then we didn't understand that 
our parents were putting us in position to better ourselves and to better other people. I grew up a Clemson fan my whole life. I remember I took Mr. Moore out there, because Mr. Moore, I remember the first time I met him, I had a Brian Dawkins jersey on it. He said, he looks like he's got the right idea. And as we grew and we went from being on separate teams in Little League, I remember uh, different moments when Phil would be a big brother. And I didn't realize it, you know. I read the first thing I saw in the program, and it was finishing the race. And what God put on my heart to share was a story of how I came to where I am now and didn't realize it until the past couple weeks. I was on the way to Clemson. If it wasn't Clemson, it was Louisiana Tech. I came across Phil at a USC track and field camp because I wanted to go and learn how to run faster because I didn't think I was big enough to play football in college. So I was gonna go for track. I stumbled across Phil on campus and all you had to do, all you just just laughed. Because our all through school, Clemson, Clemson, Clemson. And Phil said, Johnson, it's about that time, ain't it? And I thought back in that moment of all the times, he had been planting that seed in my head our whole life. <laughs> oh yeah, you're saying it now. Oh yeah, 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 right, right, right. You'll, you'll come to your senses. I thought it was a joke. But I think he knew something that I didn't know. He knew where my place was, and he knew where his place was. Spartanburg High School, one of the biggest games, I would say, in the century. 12,000 people, so loud, we couldn't hear each other talk on the field. But before the game started, I remember the crowd being so loud, and I looked over at Phil, and Phil was just smiling. And he goes, Johnson, go over there. Listen. And over on the side of Spartanburg High School, they had started a chant. Petty's overrated. Petty's overrated. And I looked at Phil, I said, man, they're saying you're overrated. He goes, I know. <laughs> Isn't it great? Slight confusion, right? That was him teaching me right there in that moment. Uh, that doesn't matter. We got a purpose. I ended up signing with USC, and one of the first people I saw on campus was Phil, again. And I said to myself, I keep running in though. This must be a sign. And he let me know it was. And he said, I told you. I met some of the greatest people in my life at that school. And no matter what, even at track meets, I could look to the side and sometimes the football players would be there. And you know what? Of all the people that were giving their game cop signs, there was one chant that I would hear. Go dogs! He wouldn't let me forget where I came from. Ever. Cafeteria. What's up, Bulldog? He was proud. I'm gonna leave you guys with this. While I was there at USC, the great Coach Curtis Fry gave us a, a lesson. He sat us down and he spoke about the color bearer, which was mostly known in the Civil War. Their job was to hold the flag for their army. Now these guys didn't have weapons. They didn't pretty much fight, but they had one of the most important roles that there was. And the coach told us that when the flag went down, 
It was another person's responsibility to pick the flag up. And sometimes just picking the flag up was enough to excite the rest of their brothers. Today I tell you, I will pick up the flag. Nothing has stopped. The race is not over. And there's so much more I would love to contribute. Because of him, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have chosen that direction. I don't know where I would be. And he knew that. He knew who I was around. He knew what was better. And he convinced me to go to a place that I would be a better person. Because I believe deep down that um, he knew we would all be prepared for this day. And I want to say, I love all of you. And we all should pick up the flag and keep going because I think he would want nothing less of us. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Kevin Crow. Um, uh, me and Phil grew up together. Um, we played Pee Wee football together. We went to high school together. Um, went to college together. Um, so this is uh, it's quite a uh, shock for me and pretty close to home. Um, when you think of home. Um, <clears throat> I brought some memorabilia down there. I remember when we were um, we were the Jets, and um, so we had nicknames. And uh, Phil's name was TD, and mine was Crow Daddy. And uh, I was the fullback, so I blocked for Phil. And um, I remember Loretta used to run the sidelines with us, you know, as as Phil would just run through the touchdowns. And um, it just seemed the years just you know just gradually just came by. Uh, we grew, grew older, we grew young men, and, um, you know, there, there towards the end, I kind of gravitated away from football and uh, focused primarily on basketball, and um, I, I will tell you that uh, the 1996 basketball team um, changed my life. Um, it meant the world for me. It meant a lot to this community. Um, I know the year 2022 really don't mean much, but uh, it meant everything to us. You know, we were thought to um, stand up in the adversity. We had a great coach that believed in us, and um, he knew what we could do. And, um, you know, I just can't sit here and tell you how sorry I am to uh, get up here and speak today. Um, <clears throat> I remember, um, you know, we'd be playing three-on-three -three basketball uh, at Phil's house, and uh, Steve Spurrier would be calling, um, Bobby Bowden would be calling. Um, he took uh, me on recruit trips with him. Uh, we went to North Carolina, um, me, him, and Taylor. And uh, we all knew we were going to Carolina, um, but uh, that was uh, some good times that I'll never forget. Um, uh, my heart goes out to the family, um, especially the kids. Um, me having two daughters in my home, um, it's tough. It's very tough for them to understand, you know, what a loss like this would mean. Um, so. If you would, I would um, like to quote some scripture. Uh, it's Romans 8, 31. And it says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him upon us all, he shall he not with him also freely give us all things. 
had a couple more things I wanted to say, but um, yeah, very choked up, very lost for words. Uh, this hit very close to home for me. Um, me and Phil started communicating um, via Instagram. He was watching me um, coach my youngest daughter. Um, she played baseball for five seasons, and then uh, she played tackle football for Hillcrest Rams last year in Greenville. And uh, I really think he was geared back to get back to, to that, uh, back to the basics, and uh, being in a place where he could see his kids um, come up and, and coach them. And uh, anyway, God rest his soul. Walrush and then Closing today, I just wanted to, I guess our theme for today was the scripture verse, 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. And it's finishing the race. And it says, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only for me, but for all who have logged for him in his appearance. You know, Phil finished the race. That he finished the race on July the 21st, 2022, and he finished it well. Phil was a, a great husband and a great father. Phil was a great son and a great little big brother. <laughs> he also was a great friend and 
great teammate of so many of you guys that, that have showed up for him today. He was a great athlete that God had blessed, and he had used his talents in a way I think were very pleasing to God and, and took him to the, the, the fullest level that he could. He was a great ambassador for the state of South Carolina, for the University of South Carolina, and for the community of Bond Springs, South Carolina, Bond Springs High School. The last time I ever talked to Phil was a couple of months ago, and he called me up and said, Coach, that I, I need your help and I need your advice. And I said, sure, Phil, what, what's, what's going on? And he told me, and I, well, he asked me, he said, the head football coaching job at Bond Springs High School has opened up. And he said, I'm sitting here thinking, trying to decide on whether to apply for it or not. And so, you know, he, he asked my opinion and, on what was going on and what we thought of it and, and I told him, I said, Phil, I said, you, you never will know. I said, I'll be honest with you. I think that you ought to go ahead and apply with it. Now, in my mind, you know, it was a no-brainer for him to come back and coach here. But I said, you will never know unless you try and he said, well, I think I will apply for it. Well, uh, he told me something, too, that, that really touched my heart. He said, my son and daughter are getting older. They're really growing up fast. And he said, I really want to get back into coaching where I can spend these crucial years of their life with them in a school together. He said, my dream is to come back to Bowen Springs and to coach my son where I play. And he said, I really think, he said, my son's gonna be better than I am. And so, you know, God's will, sometimes we don't understand. Things didn't work out that way. And, uh, but I'm gonna promise you something here today, even though we don't know why things happen, why things happen to Phil. God doesn't make mistakes. God has never, ever made a mistake. God always keeps His promises, and God has promised that if, that there will never be anything obstacle in life too big for us to handle without His help. He will always be there for us. Again, that this is a hard road for these people sitting down here. And I'd like to say, you know, you're going to feel better tomorrow, but it took me three years to figure out why my mother had to die when she died. But God will be there with you every step of the way that that's one thing He's promised and He has never gone back on a promise. He will be there to help you through every day. Uh, just wanted to mention too, uh, I want to thank all of you that came out today. That DC football guy, Actually, uh, basketball players at one time or not before they pursued the football. So they're like family to me too. That they're extended family and I love these guys. Again, I think that Phil had the opportunity to play in on the two best teams ever, football and basketball, at Ball Springs High School. And again, I appreciate these guys that have shared from their heart today. And again, I thank these family members that have come so far today to be with us. Morgan, your family, you are now members of the Bowen Springs community. We love you at Bowen Springs. We'll always be here for you. It will do anything to help you and your family on this journey now, though. Uh, let's go ahead and stand for our closing prayer. And I would like to mention two things that I know there may be some people that were not able to come today that would like to have been here that uh, we are taping the, uh, our, our service today, the Celebration of Life, and it will be posted on, on my YouTube channel, Cox Sports Broadcasting. We'll have that for anybody that would like to go back and see it or watching it. And I think, too, if you'll look on the back of your program, that Phil's family has started the Phil Petty Scholarship Foundation. And I've got the information on here where you can go to that, and I think that would be great if we could really support his foundation that his family has started. Though. But I want to thank all of you that came. I want to thank my wife who has helped me put this together today and been right there with me. And she knows how heartbroken I've been the last couple of weeks thinking about Phil and all, just like you have too. Though. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you today for 
the chance to, to celebrate the life of so many that us here today love, and that's Phil Petty. God, all the way going back to his, some of his teachers that are here today, back when he was in elementary school and high school, there are so many people that, that, that loved him and he loved back, God. I can remember telling him in my last conversation, Phil, I love you. And he said, Coach, I love you and appreciate you too. So just thank you so much for what he's meant to this community. God, I pray a special prayer for his family right now, God. And again, they have come all the way from Myrtle Beach. I pray you will give them a safe trip back home. But God, I just pray that, that maybe something that was said today in some way will, will help them through the struggles they're going through right now. Though. But God, just thank you for the promises you've made. We promise, thank you for the promise of eternal life and to get to see our loved ones again someday in heaven. And God, I pray you'll be with us as we go our separate ways today, though. But thank you so much for the memory of Phil Petty. And I ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got some...